Okay, and a very good afternoon here on the 3rd of November 2017. My name is Rishi Patel, co-founder of Master of the Markets, the Elite Traders Conference and the Traders Open Day. Very warm welcome to this afternoon's Forex Friday here on the 3rd of November 2017. The Master of the Markets live trading room, the Elite Trading Room wrap up for the week an assessment of the positions that we have taken over the week and uh, a review of our performance. As you know, here at Master of the Markets, we specialize in trader training on a transparent basis, putting trading first and, of course, the training second. Uh, but, uh, of course, we are traders first, and that's why we do the weekly wrap-up in a truly transparent basis to talk about whether we've taken winning or losing trades, what the performance looks like thus far. So let's start by look, looking at the closed trades on the live trading room. And of course, the live trading room is the trading room which we have for the members of Live Trade Mentorship, Live Trade Mentorship Advanced. So uh, the live trading room has taken only two trades uh, this week that have closed. Uh, and those are the dollar Swiss franc uh, on the money bars. Uh, we took a short opportunity on this bar just here, which was the 27th of October. And we also took a trade on the dollar Japanese yen. So let's review, first of all, the dollar Swiss trade. So first of all, some interesting learnings on the dollar Swiss for us this week. We had a trade opportunity which we took here on the low of this particular bar just here. 9.964 we entered the market. And you'll see this a little later on my journal. It might not be exactly 9.964, but thereabouts. We entered the market 9.964. And we took a short. And then, of course, we had... Um, a pullback here in the market. So now, quite interestingly, what happened here on the pullback is this bar actually broke the high of the PSWB, which is the bar we enter on. But it didn't take us out of the trade on our cash account. So we were still floating loss at that time on the opportunity. Uh, what we did is we took the trade off uh, at that time. We saved ourselves 10 pips. So we actually exited this trade for minus 62 pips or minus 0.86 percent and you can see this all on the transparent journal that we of course keep here at master the markets i can actually show that to you let me pull that across so you can see exactly where that trade was that's this trade just here dollar swiss as i said 9968 we're in the market and we're out at 130 so 1.0030 is where we got out of the market that's uh, this price level just here. So we actually got out at 10030. The reason we got out is because the high of this bar had been broken, the PSWB, so the trade's actually invalid, but it was still rolling on the cash count. However, in future, what we're going to do is going to leave those positions to run because these are purely just points of accumulation over here. So stop losses are being knocked out of the market before a potential reversal may or may not occur here. That's the theory. Uh, and so in the future, when we have opportunities like that, which take us out of the trade according to the graph, but keep us in on our cash accounts, on the broker account, because with compensation for spread, we will keep those trades running. But that was the dollar Swiss there, minus 62 pips uh, and minus 0.86%. And then the dollar yen, uh, we also took a trade opportunity short just as here as well. Uh, we were short on this particular bar just here. And you can see that we've positioned our stop order uh, on the high of this bar. We then trailed our stop on this bar just here. This is what we class as a reversal primary. And you can see so we minimized the downside loss when that moved against us the following day. And we were out of that market for only a 27 pip loss and a minus 0.31%. So if I were to add up the positions for the week so far uh, with the uh, opportunity on the dollar uh, Japanese yen and also on the opportunity on the dollar Swiss franc, you will see that actually we were minus 1.14% in total. Actually, that transparently here on the journal as well. And you can see there minus 1.17 is what the journal is saying at this time for those two opportunities or minus 89 pips. So that's for money bars. So let's then go on to review the elite trades which were closed for the week. On the elite room, the Vedanta elite room, they didn't get involved in any additional trades uh, to the money bars. So nothing additionally there that has closed out this week. So no update by way of elite closed trades. Let's talk about live trading room open positions. You can see here at the moment, I'm on a floating profit. 62 pounds, 63 pounds, 64 pounds, 2 pence here on this euro yen. 
and the euro yen if i switch over to the chart um and if i just switch my profile across in fact If I just switch my profile across, I resume. So um, you can see on the Euro Japanese yen. What I'm going to do is switch across the profile to lift off 2.0. Sorry, to so lift off 2.0 profile, but actually the 3.0 strategy. Uh, if I switch across to Euro Japanese yen, let's pull this open. You can see it all in relation to the moving averages. So currently, you can see 20 moving average above 50, above 100. Very important initial point. Then you can also see that um, we have had the primary, which is the bar pattern we look for for trades on the lift-off strategy. This has continued to rise, and so we are in a profit at that at the moment, and we are currently up on this particular opportunity around 35 pips in floating profit, as you can see just there. Let's, um, let's keep that in mind, and uh, that's that happening there. Today we have a reversal primary on this setup, um, as we did with the dollar yen on the flip side. We're going to trail our stop low uh, to the low of this bar, keep it nice and tight, and that will take us to better than break even, uh, which will obviously mean a, a guaranteed profit for us, uh, but obviously it'll keep the stop tight. We're looking for a lift further higher on this. You can see our target is actually 306 pips away at this time. That's what we're shooting for. Uh, we want to see a break of this swing high for momentum to come in and then carry on us upward on this trade that's the goal of course not all of them are going to fly and the liftoff strategy has been performing exceptionally well um, as you can see actually here from the account history uh, we've got four trades of which only one small loser a uh, net profit of actually 1714 pounds since june this year on just four trades it's exceptional performance picking out the best quality signals so we are um, happy with that and obviously we can we can get this to better than break even that's a, a, a good a good opportunity as far as we are concerned. Let's now take it over to the um, elite trades that are open for the day. And so on the elite room, they have a trade open on the dollar Swiss franc, which is currently sitting around the break even. It's a swing profits trade with a very tight stop loss um, on this particular bar just here that yesterday is a swing profit setup. So a very tight stop on that one. Uh, and we're looking for a larger reward risk ratio of around three to one on that. Uh, we also long on the smart money on the Euro Japanese yen. So smart money, the elite room is also long as well from this primary just here and they're looking to hold for the long haul as well. They have a different trailing stop mechanism to us to compensate for different levels of accumulation. So slightly more advanced on the elite room. Uh, but uh, on the live trading room certainly you can see we have already started to trail our stop pretty tight. Let's be on the lookout for all of this as we move through. Uh, and that's the wrap up for this week so far. So those are the trades that we take of the week. Um, and those are the open, prof open profit and loss trades that are running as well across both trading rooms. The topic for this week then that leads me on to is called a building a trading system. So building a trading system. Um, so what are the actual considerations to take into account when you're actually building a trading strategy so I thought I'd show you that this week so here you can see I have uh, open actually a template crib sheet and a crib sheet is basically the in-house version of the master the markets trading plan if you like but it's beyond a trading plan because it's an exact concise quantified scalable reproducible rule set which we use to actually build our trading strategies. And it is a very powerful rule set which gives us the conviction to trade live in real time and share our results. So on this rule set, you need a couple of very important aspects to be covered. The first and most important thing is the objective of your strategy. You have to understand what the strategy's first concept and then its objective actually are. These two things, a lot of people when building a strategy don't have a clue about. They take a couple of random components, throw them all together and hope for the best. But that's not how you build a trading strategy. It's think about it like this. If you were building a car, you'd first need to know your target audience. Is your car going to be for sports fans who want low wheelbase? They want something that's close to the ground. They want something that's going to be light and fast. Um, they want something maybe with a paddle shift gearbox, uh, something like that. Or is it for more of a family environment? Is it for, you know, you need seven seats inside it somewhere. It's going to have some good weight to it. It's got to be comfortable. It's got to be large. The wheel's going to be a bit bigger. It's going to be a little further off the floor. Um, 
you, or is it going to be for a completely different purpose? Is it going to be a truck that's going to move around large uh, objects and needs to be pretty large in terms of the actual space in which it can hold? All of these things need to be taken into consideration when you're building a car. Same thing when you're building a trading strategy. What is the purpose of the strategy? What are you attempting to capture? What's your objective? What's your concept? What concept is it built on? Why should it keep working? These questions are answered in first the concept of the strategy and the objective of the strategy. You answer this first. First two considerations for building a strategy. Then you need to ask yourself, what are your rules for entry? And under rules for entry, you need to have what we call four degrees of freedom. That is a minimum of four objective objective quantified parameters to get involved into a trade. And that, of course, needs to be tested. They need to be quantified, reproducible, and scalable. That's very important. Um, and once you've covered your rules for entry, inside this section, you'll also cover things like cancellation orders. Uh, cancellation orders. So what, what would happen in the market for me to cancel an untriggered order? Take this into consideration as well. What would happen for me to... Uh, cancel my order after it had actually started to get into the trade. We'll cover that in rules for exit. Um, what would happen for me not to enter the trade at all? We call these our do not enter rules. So you need to have an understanding of what these all are. This all comes under your rules for entry. Then you need to take into consideration, of course, your rules for your stop loss. Once you have uh, entry rules in place, locked up and ready to go, then you need to start considering the stop loss. And under stop loss, we have broken that down into two key sections. And you have your initial stop loss, and then you have your trailing stop loss. So how are you going to position your stop in the market initially? I'll give you an example. On the liftoff 3.0 trading strategy, which we're running right now on this Euro Japanese Yen, our initial stop loss goes behind uh, either the potential swing low or the two trending bars. So this is our very important way of, of trailing initially our stop loss. And then um, what you need to take into consideration after you've done that is how you're going to trade your stop loss. Let's look at the Euro Yen for a good example of this. So the Euro Japanese Yen, in a nutshell, it's basically looking at uh, positioning its stop under two trending bars. So you can see that the two trending bars uh, are just here, and that's where we would initially have positioned our stop. That also happens to be the place at which we're seeing a potential swing low forming. So we'd position our stop here on the on the on the lift off 3.0 trading strategy. This is what we would do. Then how will we trail the stop loss? So you need to take that into consideration as well. Understand this: the lift off 3.0 actually goes ahead and breaks down the trailing stop loss then into three key sections. So you need to consider: will you trail your stop under different circumstances? What happens if, let's say, you have a confirmed swing low according to the master of the market algorithm? What happens, let's say, for example, if you break, uh, if you move X number of pips away from the 20 moving average. When will you trail your stop loss? Under what conditions? This needs to be a quantified rule set, remember. Don't forget, it needs to be quantified. It needs to be something that you can um, make mathematical, if you like, and then reproduce in real markets without doubt. So that's your rules, your trading stop loss. And then, of course, you have your rules for exit. These Inside rules for exit, you need to take multiple things into consideration once again. You need to look for, for example, uh, what will happen during the trade for me to get out. So how am I going to position a target, for example? One of your rules for exit will be a target mechanism. So on the money bar strategy, for example, we don't place the target until we have the second bar, which breaks the previous bar's high. It's called a primary. So you have to take this into consideration. Will you preset a target before you get into the trade? Will you wait X number of bars after you're in the trade? Or will you have a target at all? This needs to be taken into consideration for rule for exit. Then what are your other exit criteria? What should happen during the trade for me to get out. So for example, that what I talked about on the dollar Swiss franc today um, was we had a consideration to take into account that the previous bars high was broken, the potential swing bars high was broken on our money bars trade, which was just here. According to this, should we have exited the market or should we keep it in? This is a good consideration to take into account because it was still in on the broker account, but according to the system, according to the actual strategy, we should have exited. What do you do in that situation? This is all documented under rules for exit. At the end of it, you have a very tight, heavily quantified plan. Many of the Master of the Market's crib sheets can range as much as 15 pages, 15 A4 pages in, in length, because they're all covered with diagrams with lots of examples of actually the trading strategy and the different outcomes for it. Some of the trading strategies like money bars, for example, have several appendices even attached to them with six to eight pages each 
of further diagrams which explain what happened in each situation for the other aspects of the strategy. So you need lots and lots of detail on this when you're building your trading strategy. So it's quantified and reproducible so you can trade it with conviction because that's what we do here at Master the Markets, we trade with conviction. And you can see us always doing that in the live trading room. Now, this crib sheet template that I'm going over, you can actually find it in our Traders Essentials kit, uh, for which there is a link in the description just below. So uh, if you want to pick up a Traders Essentials kit, which has this crib sheet template in, along with a trade journal template, along with some trading strategies we've built, um, along with a couple of other great items that we've put into an Essentials kit for any kind of trader, beginner or intermediate or advanced, you can pick, click onto the link and pick up a copy of that should you uh, think that that would add to your uh, trading arsenal, which I can pretty prom much promise you it will. A lot of traders have found that very useful. Uh, but that's pretty much it in terms of my wrap-up for the week on Forex Friday. Uh, today is the 3rd of November 2017. I'm signing off for now, and I look forward to speaking to you all again very soon on another Forex Friday in the near future. Until the next time, stay disciplined, follow your plan, and trade like a master. Bye for now.